Hello, welcome back to Space Engine Days. In today's video, we'll look at another small block land vehicle that once again has a very fancy suspension system, which is so, well, it's so unique. I've never seen anything like it, and it's just simply better for me to show you it rather than it is for me to try and explain. So over here, here is, well, it's not in English, but roughly translate to mobile platform. And this is what it is. It's a well-armed little land vehicle. It's got wheels on the bottom, four of them, and a lot of rotors and a lot of hinges. See, so when you spawn this in, before we get inside it, what you've got to do is remove a magnet plate on top. This is the only way in and out of this ship, but when you do this, you've got to replace it with an antenna, make sure you can easily access the remote control system, rather than diving through the control menu. So we can leave that open, just remove that block, and have this hanging off the side. If I will copy the same colour scheme, there we go. Yes, we get into the seat, and we need to access the remote control block. Now, because a lot of this stuff is not in English, it's in Chinese, where the symbols do not actually display in-game, it might be better for you to use the shortcut and access this. I'm just going to come down to here and select Control. Now we go. Once we're inside, this is it. This is what we're going to be using, and as you can see, compared to the vehicle right next to me, it has lifted itself off the ground. Before we go any further, bring the free camera over like so. There we go, that'll do quite nicely. In fact, we can, uh, I can just stay there for now. We now just start to move this thing around. So moving to the left... And then moving to the right, as you can see, it's got an amazing suspension system where it essentially ice skates in order to turn itself all the way around. But it gets even better. Putting the camera away and actually pressing the space bar, we can now jump this thing into the air. There's no reason this thing landing dodgily because it will always automatically realign itself to the ground and it will just never tip over. And of course, we can do other stuff such as pressing C to move it down, make itself nice and small. And of course, we can move backwards and then move forwards. But grab hold my character once again and actually putting on the thrusters, moving this thing forwards. Here we go, it might take a little bit of time to actually get going. It does have a bit of a problem getting the wheels moving. And here we go, we now move left and right. We now just lean to the left, lean to the right. In fact, that's the wrong way around there, but you get what I mean. We press spacebar, do a big jump, and land back down. But it gets even better because of the way this thing has been set up is if you lose one of your legs, it can still drive perfectly fine. You will simply drive around like this, but on one leg. Hopefully I can damage it right here. No, I cannot, we just simply bounced away, so I have to bring this thing to a stop and manually remove one of the legs. And here we go, what I've done is now remove one of the legs on this vehicle. So if I was to take remote control over this, so into here, finding that, taking control, there we go. We now lift all the way up, and as you can see, the left leg has now fallen off it. Turning on the thrusters, moving forwards, and here we go, it just stays absolutely perfectly level, so we were the driving thing around. If we can move left, we can move right, it will try to tip itself over, we might take a few bumps here and there, then it'll just reline itself, and away we go once again. It's absolutely incredible how this thing works, and well, it's just an interesting design to actually play around with, drive around at high speeds, because this thing with both wheels can handle 100 meters per second very easily, it's only if you were to do a dodgy landing, like say you're jumping off a cliff edge, high speeds, and you've somehow got yourself not straight on the ground, it might just bounce all the way down to the suspension, and the main body clips the ground. But if you're playing sensibly, it just works absolutely perfectly and absolutely flawlessly. As you can see at the back there, if I zoom all the way in as we're driving this thing around, we can see how it stabilizes itself with a bunch of gyroscopes on rotors, which is absolutely magnificent to watch as we were to bumble around here. Then we're going to damage the side. But you know what? It does not matter. We can still drive this thing away. And here we go one more time. Yes, we lost one of our gyroscopes, but that does not matter. It's still perfectly useful at the end of the day. And of course, we've still got a turret on top, which can take over and start shooting. We can lift it up, we can move it down, but we cannot move it left or right. And here we are in the first person view, where you can see where I've damaged the vehicle on the side. And there it is. We see our wheel control script down there. And then over there should be for the custom turret on top. We lift it up and down and fire it and all of that. But yes, that is how it works. So hopping out of this, then come down to the ground again. When we get out of it, it just drops all the way down, but it's still absolutely flawless and absolutely balanced. Even though to jump here, try to nudge it around, nothing's going to happen. It'll still keep itself perfectly balanced, or just away from the vehicle, doing whatever you want to do. Anyway, spawning a brand new one, we're going to do that one more time. But not drive it around, just showing off the legs once again. Then we'll go around the outside, and we'll drive around a bit more. So we've got to put that on the back there. You don't really have to put that on there, it's only if you want to use the shortcut to get into the remote control block. I personally like to come into here, and just find it like so. There we go. So now that we've got a brand new one, we now just move to the left. There we go, we're now turning all the way around. And we're going to keep turning and turning and turning until we do a full 360. Then we're going to go all the way back to how we were. And there we go, just leans to the opposite side. It will start to move backwards. 
There we go. It won't really go backwards, it's more for stopping this thing. And that is the only real problem with this vehicle, it's actually getting it to stop when you're at high speeds. Because that's when it starts to come a bit dodgy, where it tends to break itself, because it doesn't really have that much stopping speed. Anyway, moving forwards. There we will see how it tilts forwards, but without that thruster, it's not going to be going anywhere anytime soon. We need to use that atmospheric thruster to actually give us that little boost to start moving forwards. But once we get that boost, we can turn it off and safely drive without it. And of course, we can press C to go down again. Here we're looking on the side, moving up, then moving back down. And then my personal favourite, hiding the HUD, pressing the spacebar. And there we go, we just do a massive jump in the air. Very good for jumping over obstacles. So say we were to, ah, I guess you do this right now. Be on the thrust, or oh, moving forwards here. Here we go, about to crash into that, but no we're not, we just jump over it. And well, that's an absolute failure. Let's go do that one more time, which is going to come around here. Turn myself all the way around, ignoring the wreck in the distance, because I have been having a lot of fun with this vehicle. Well, I'll actually use the wreck in the distance, save me from turning it around. Here we go, we're going to start charging towards it. 30 meters per second. We're now approaching it, pressing spacebar, and over we go. <laughs> and there we go. And I think that's enough for that. Coming to a stop. There we go. And we lost one of our wheels, which was what we were trying to do earlier, so we were to do that massive jump over the cliff. Yes, yeah, so we still drive this thing around, all nice and dandy. And yes, that's enough of me playing around with this thing. So here we are with a brand new spawned version where the manual plate is still on top, which we will have to remove later on to get inside it. But pressing F10 and searching for the little number next which you cannot search for the Chinese lettering in Space Engine is for whatever reason. And here it is. So this thing is 331 small blocks using a couple of the DLC packs. It does use a couple scripts we'll take a look at a bit later on, but we've got no other information whatsoever on the workshop page itself. So simply give it a thumbs up, which is a well-deserved thumbs up, due to how well this thing actually works and how complicated it is. Go and around towards the very front, have a look around the outside, then we'll go through the programmable block, drive around for a bit more, and test out a few more of the controls. So with the sunlight hopefully on the front of it, that'll do quite nicely. Here we are for the very front of the mobile platform. And as you can see, we've got ourselves an auto cannon turret with a bunch of steel blocks on the front of it, hiding up a bunch of our internals. All the way up to here, we see our custom turrets on the left and right hand side in the form of our assault cannons, which both have some spot lights on the top there to act as a bit of decoration, as well as to light up the darkness. Coming in between here, we'd see our transparent LCD screen telling us our horizon, and there's a little seat that will sit in to actually control it. We were down around on the side. There we go, so we see a clear view of our turret on the front there. There's our amp thrusters to help us our little boost straight off the bat. And on the side there, there's our wheels now being angled down onto the ground. Getting a closer look over to here. There we go. That's how it comes all the way across, all the way up. Onto this section, we've got ourselves a little rotor. And onto this part, we then got ourselves a hinge onto a rotor. that will come all the way down to this arm. Onto the main body there, we can see a reactor, which has been connected up onto that hinge. And into there, we can see another rotor that come all the way up into this section, which is how our seat is currently being attached onto the vehicle. Put away for now, onto the very back of this thing. Here we go, so we've got one hell of a lot of gyroscopes, just controlling everything about it, and as you can see, they are moving around there, twiddling around, to make sure this thing is absolutely perfectly balanced, so when we drive it around, it can fully function. So all we've got is six gyroscopes, we can see five of them spinning, one of them is static, and down underneath it, there we go. We see how the reactors are connected up once again to our rotors, onto the back of those gyroscopes. Onto this part, there's another reactor, there's a cargo tank for your ammunition, there's a cushion amsoot thruster with an LCD screen in the middle, and then pulling further away, there we go, there's a very clear view of the bottom, and of course my light will not work, so we're currently under the map. So yes, that's our wheels, how they've been connected up to the rotors, onto the blaster edge blocks, then all the way across to the main body of the vehicle. Then finally, moving all the way up and looking down, here we go. Not too much to talk about up here, but there's that low magnetic plate that we need to remove, and there's the top of our guns. Of course, we can come a bit closer into the middle here, all the way down, with my light turned on. And there we go. So yes, that's our turret script. Down to here's your wheels. We've got a few more programmable blocks to take a look at a bit later on. And towards the back of this thing, there we go. And with that, that's a brief look around the outside. And it does look bloody fantastic with how it's been set up. It looks very futuristic, almost like a police vehicle from the future that would just dart around chasing criminals. I'm not too sure where I'm getting that idea from, but I'm pretty sure I've seen something with something similar in a TV show or a movie, but yes, that's just what I'm going for, for the moment. Anyway, grab and hold my character, coming all the way up to it, we're going to remove that magnetic plate on the top, so grab and hold my antenna, removing that, not putting the antenna onto this one, popping into first person view, pressing I, coming to here and finding our programmable blocks, all the way down to here, we've got ourselves whip subgrid wheel control script, down into this one, into the edit, where that has gone, where has the edit gone, there it is, then we've got this one right here, I'm not too sure what this is, I'm pretty sure this is the main one of how it's going to be functioning and moving around. And you see we've got a bunch more question marks, which I presume is going to be Space Engineers not being able to look at Chinese. 
and then all the way down to the bottom. There's a lot going on with this thing. But yes, I'm not too sure what the script is actually called, so I just highly recommend downloading it to actually take a look at the script and see if you can use it on other vehicles. But on to the next one, down to here, there we go, we've got our turret controller script, which is this one up here. Then into our final one, we've got another very odd one, so into edit, and there we go, we've got this one right here. So what this one is again, I do not know. It's got a lot of very complicated and very scary stuff going on with it. Anyway, out of that, and actually coming to the remote control block, so down to here and finding where that's gone, up to there, and taking control over this, wherever that has gone, where's the control gone, there it is. And here we are, these are the only controls we get. So starting with number 9, which could be controlled for gyroscopes, you do not need to touch this, so in fact you could easily just drag this off the hotbar, because it works straight off the bat, and I don't think you really want to be messing around with gyroscopes, with the way this vehicle is working. Number 2 is then for your atmospheric thrusters to help move this thing around, and then number 1 is to take control over your turret on top there, so now we just move this thing around, lift it up and down, and fire if we need to, there we go. And of course without the thrusters turned on, we'll move back slightly, and I'm not too sure why the gun just suddenly went off there, I was nowhere near my mouse, so it just randomly went off, but we can now just mouse click it one more time, there we go. Then we simply press F to escape that, and we're ready to drive this around one more time. Oh, there it goes again. We're just going to ignore that, turn on number two, and start to move forwards. Here we go. See, so yes, this thing does take a fair bit of time to move forwards, but once we start to get going, once we get to about 50 meters per second, you can turn off the thrusters, and we'll keep on accelerating, and it does make it much more stabler and much more safer. And we come to a stop, here we go. And yes, as you can see, this is where the problems start to happen, so this is where we're going to start to bounce around a little bit, especially if we are moving at 100 meters per second, and it does also take quite some time to come back down to zero. So do be aware of that if you are charging towards the base, but it does not matter really at the end of the day, especially if you've got very low to the ground base, because you can always jump over it and just do a cool little stunt show. Anyway, turning around all the spots. There we go, moving forwards as well. There we go. It does take a little bit of time to actually turn this thing around when you're actually moving forwards. And then turning it off once again, driving forwards like so, dodging that tree, coming over to this rock. Can we jump over it? Of course we can, pressing spacebar, and away we go. And of course we can turn to the left once again, drive over to this one. Oh, we're getting a little bit bouncy there. Gotta be a little bit careful how far you are turning and what speed you're turning at. Here's the other one, jumping over it. And there we go, a lot of clearance over that one. No risk of slamming into it, despite its gun pointing to the sky. And of course we can do one more little thing, which is going to be turn on the thrusters one more time and just go up at 100 meters per second, go all the way up this little cliff edge, or all the way up this little mound, and I think that'll be that for this vehicle. It's very self explanatory what it does. It's a very, very impressive vehicle for how it speeds up with the wheels. I just highly recommend downloading it yourself, checking it out, and seeing what's going on with those scripts. And just, well, the way it controls. It's such an odd thing to control. And, well, just when you think it's going to blow up, just like there, I was expecting it to blow up, it just does not. And of course, we can turn this around in midair. There we go, we're now just blowing up on the side. Lost all our wheels. I think that's a good place to end this vehicle. Yes, as I said, it's a bloody fantastic vehicle to use in your world, but this is going to be a great little place to actually test out the wheels. So before I actually end the video, before I actually go into ending Blurble, just dropping this down, getting rid of that. Oh, removing a bunch of blocks here, do not mean to remove them. Into the seat. There we go, coming to the control panel for a start to wander down the cliff itself. There we go, turning this thing around, sending down the cliff, this will be the grand finale. So off we go, so turning on the thrusters. And down we go. Will this work? I'm not too sure if it's going to. We're going to just press space bar occasionally. Keep this thing raised off the ground. But as you see, on this absolute treacherous terrain going down the cliff, it's still perfectly fine. Despite us losing a wheel, we can still drive this thing around if I can get this disconnected off there. There we go. And now off we go once again. It's still bloody impressive how it could work with only one set of wheels. Anyway, as I was saying beforehand, before I got distracted with that cliff edge, it's a fantastic vehicle to use in your world. I highly recommend just downloading it and checking it out yourself. There'll be a link to it description below if you do wish to download it and play around yourself. I'll be back with another video some point soon. Bye bye.